Hello dear students, welcome to mathematics class. In this class, let us discuss some more theorems on group theory. So here, it is the first theorem of today's class. Now, the inverse of each element of a group is unique. So it means that if any group is given, then inverse of each and every element of that group is unique. Means there is no other inverse element except only the unique element. For example, so here it is the group that is g equal to 1 minus 1 i minus i. We have proved that already it is a group as well as an abelian group. Now here in this example, while satisfying the inverse law, here 1 into 1 is equal to 1 or that is equal to 1 into 1. Here, we have written that inverse of 1 is 1 means inverse of the element 1 is 1 means there is no other element which will satisfy the property that 1 into 1 is equal to 1. If any element is there, then that will become the inverse of 1. But here, other than 1, there is no element. So, therefore, that 1 is the inverse of 1. And similarly here, for the element minus 1, if you multiply this minus 1 by the minus 1, then we are getting plus 1, which is the identity element of the group G equal to 1 minus 1 i minus i. So, therefore, this minus 1 is the inverse of minus 1. That is, inverse of minus 1 is equal to minus 1. Means, now, by multiplying minus 1 by any other element, we are not getting the product as plus 1. So, therefore, the only possible value of the inverse of minus 1 is minus 1. And similarly, for plus i, the inverse is minus i. If you replace this minus i by any other element, then that will not be the inverse of minus i. And similarly, inverse of minus i is plus i. So, it is the unique value of the inverses of the each and every element. So, here this is a particular example, but here we need to prove the theorem the inverse of each element of a group is unique. We need to prove this in general. Proof Let G be a group. Let us consider G as a group and let A be the, let A be any element of G and small e is the identity element of G. So, it is our consideration. So, first let us consider G as a group and let a be the any element of the group g and small e will be the identity element of the group g. Suppose, suppose if possible b and c, b and c are two inverses of the element small a. We know that there will be only one inverse. But here we are assuming that B and C are the two inverses of A. Here we need to show that the inverse is unique. Unique means these two inverses are one and the same or B and C are equal. If we prove that B is equal to C, then it is enough to say that inverse of each element of a group is unique. So here B and C are the inverses of A, then we can write this as B A is equal to E or it is equal to A B by using the law of inverse that is A star A inverse equal to E or A inverse star A is equal to E, right. So therefore, here B is the inverse of A. So therefore, if we operate that B on A, then the product of them is equal to E and similarly A B that is also that is nothing but a star a inverse and a inverse star a. So, both are giving the same result since 
B is the inverse of A. Similarly, we can write C A is equal to E or it is equal to A C. This is also because of the same cause that C is the inverse of A. Now, we have B into A C. B into A C by considering the three elements A, B and C of the same group G. So, therefore, B into A C. Now, we know that the value of A C that is equal to 1 E, right? Because A C is equal to E here. Now, this is equal to B. B into A C and A C is nothing but identity element E since C is the inverse of A. Now, B into E, that E is the identity element. So, therefore, that B remains as it is, that is equal to B. Then, and B A into C. Now, here, B A is equal to 1, E and C as it is, it is equal to 1, C. Now, G is a group, right? that we have considered G is a group and if G is a group then it has to satisfy the associative property. So, therefore, we can write that B into A C is equal to B A into C by using associative law or property. Since G is a group it has to satisfy the associative property. So, therefore, by using associative law, we have written that B into A C is equal to B A into C and already we have simplified B into A C is equal to what? B and B A into C is equal to what? C. So, therefore, here, if B and C are equal, then it means that inverse of each element is unique. So, therefore, the theorem is true. Therefore, the theorem is true or hence the proof. So, therefore, now we have proved that inverse of each element of a group is unique by considering two different elements and assuming that they are the inverses of A and finally, we have proved that these two distinct elements are same. So, therefore, B is equal to C, hence the inverse of each element of a group is unique. So, that is the result of the theorem. The next one is, show that every group G with identity small e such that A square is equal to E for all A belongs to G is abelian. So, here it is given that G is a group and E is the identity element of that group and this is the given condition on the value of E that is A square is equal to E for all the elements of G then that group is abelian means in which group this condition is satisfying then that group will be abelian. So, already we know the definition of abelian group what is the definition any group G which satisfies the commutative property means for G to be abelian this must be satisfied that is A star B is equal to B star A or A B is equal to B A. If we prove that A B is equal to B A then it is enough to say that the given group G is abelian because this is already a group means it is already satisfied four properties, closure law, associative law, identity law and inverse law. And along with those properties, if it satisfies the commutative property, then we can say that it is the abelian group. So, therefore, it is given that G is a group and we need to prove that that is abelian. So, therefore, here only we need to prove that AB is equal to BA. That is enough to prove this theorem. Now, let G be a group, let G be a group and let us consider the two distinct elements A and B in the group G. 
now since a and b are the elements of g and also g is a group then that group must satisfy the closer law so therefore we can write ab belongs to g or a star b belongs to g here a and b are the two elements of g and here we can write g is a group so since g is a group it has satisfied closer law so therefore we can write ab belongs to g or you can write one more reason that by using closer law we have written that ab belongs to g now by given condition by given condition what is the condition here a square is equal to e is the given condition and this is true for all the elements of g now here a and b are the two different elements of g and then ab this ab is the unique element means by operating star on a and b we have op got the product ab so therefore ab is the single element so therefore now we can write this as ab whole square is equal to e because ab is the single element now in place of a we have substituted ab and now this ab square that can be written as ab into ab is equal to e right because ab square means we need to multiply the element ab twice so therefore ab into ab and now the same expression can be written as a into ba into b is equal to e just we have changed the brackets of the elements ab ab then it is a into ba into b so this is by using associative law by using the associative law we can shift the brackets and now post multiply b on both sides so already i told that what is post multiplication and what is pre multiplication now here we need to post multiply b on both sides means on the rhs of the this these two elements so therefore a into ba into b into b now it is e into b now it becomes a into ba and this is b square and this one is b right now by using the given condition that a square equal to e and similarly we can write here b square is equal to e so therefore it becomes a into b a into e is equal to b then it is a into b a if you multiply this total element by the identity element the element remains as it is that is a into b a is equal to b and now now pre multiply pre multiply a on both sides pre multiply a on both sides then this expression becomes a into b a is equal to a b right because you are multiplying pre multiply means left side of the given element so it is the given element and we need to multiply here we need to multiply a on the left side of that element here also left side of b then it becomes ab and here it is a into a into b a now a into a is equal to a square into b a is equal to ab and now a square equal to what e so therefore e into b a is equal to ab now e into b a is equal to what it is simply b a and it is equal to ab now b a is equal to ab this is nothing but ab is equal to b a both are same so therefore if ab is equal to ba then it implies that commutative property satisfied 
for G. If commutative property is satisfied for G, then we can say that G is an abelian group. So therefore, it implies that G is an abelian group. So therefore, this is the theorem. So here we have considered that the given condition A square equal to E and that is true for all the elements of G. Then by using the closure law, we have written AB. Then in place of A, we are using AB because that AB is the single element that is not the two distinct elements. That is the product of two elements means that will be a single element. So therefore, AB square is written as AB into AB then by using associative property we have written this one and now post multiplying B on both sides. Now it is A into BA and B into B. Here B into B becomes B square and B square equal to E by using the given condition. So therefore, this becomes A into BA and this side this is B only. And now pre multiply by A on both sides. So therefore, it is A into A this is A square and here it is that B becomes AB because we are pre multiplying A. Now it is E into BA is equal to AB. Now E into BA that is BA only and here it is AB. So it implies that AB is equal to BA. If AB is equal to BA then it is nothing but A star B is equal to B star A which is the definition for commutative law. So hence if commutative property is satisfied for any group then we can say that that is the abelian group. So therefore here AB is equal to BA is true hence that G is the abelian group. So therefore that is the proof of the given theorem. So here we are requir required to prove that G is abelian that we have proved G as the abelian group. 